Hi, I'm Dee Bills, Front Office Guru, and I'm so excited to introduce you to my new online academy for your front desk. But first, I want to share why it's so important to provide consistent training and what happens when you do. So why invest in training for your front desk? Well, first of all, they have two major responsibilities. The first is to get patients scheduled for the care that they need. And next, they need to ensure that they arrive as scheduled for their care. Consider that your front office team members are patient care coordinators. Essentially, they're a guide. As the guide, their role is to coordinate a patient's care along their path to health and recovery so they can live their very best life. Now here's the real reasons why your front desk needs consistent training. First of all, the average person isn't born with people management skills. And yet, we need our patient care coordinators to manage people at all times. They're responsible for coordinating patient care. But when they're uncertain about managing people, it can hold them back from actually handling your patients. Here's another common issue that gets in the way of them managing patient care. Many of us have been taught social graces. You know, those things where you have to let people have their own way or it has to go a certain way and we can't challenge people. Here's some examples. You can't force someone to do something. Don't be pushy. Ask if something is okay. Social graces aren't a bad thing, right? Because they also have taught us how to be kind and considerate and respect others. But they can create a problem for your front desk because it causes them to worry about offending or upsetting someone. And it keeps them from actually managing your patient's care. Here's an example of social graces causing a problem. Have you ever heard your front desk staff ask a patient, when would you like to come in? Or does that time work for you? In both of those cases, they're giving the patient a very broad choice and the choice becomes yes or no. 85% of the time, on average, your patient is going to say no. Another one is, would you like to reschedule? This creates a huge problem in our practice, especially if you have recurring patients or a patient that needs to get in even once a year and we ask them if they want to reschedule, it leaves a very broad open answer. We usually get no. Another one is, could you please call me back? Now look, this one alone is not a bad one. We've been taught to say please and thank you. We do want our staff to be kind, but in this scenario, we're giving that patient a choice. And what ends up happening is, they call you back on their time frame. And that could be a week, a month. It could also create more work for your front desk because they have to keep calling and keep calling instead of getting that patient to call them back. Basically, they're letting the patient decide what happens next. Patient objections are another common stop for your front desk. They can really make it difficult for them to manage their patients. Because when someone objects and they don't know what to say in return, it creates uncertainty about what to do and say. It creates uncertainty in that situation. Often they're not sure what to say when someone throws out an objection to the following. Scheduling an evaluation. Arriving as scheduled. Those are your same day cancels and no shows that really create a problem for everyone. Scheduling out for further appointments or future appointments. So if you're, you're working on a recurring model or if you're working on a six month or yearly model for your patients or your clients, that can be a huge problem. Another one is paying what's due at the time of visit. That creates a huge button because everyone has a button on money and it can be very difficult to know what to say in that situation. Another one is continuing with care. If you have that recurring model and your patients get to the end of that plan of care and they throw out an objection when they're prescribed more visits, if your front desk doesn't know what to say and how to handle that objection, they end up with a patient who's dropped out of care or an unsuccessful completion. And I think that one's the biggest one for all of us. It's like being at a crossroads and not knowing what to do. Your staff just gets stuck. And if you've ever tried to handle an objection and gotten stuck, you know what I'm talking about. Objections put a stop sign right in front of them. They end up feeling uncertainty in that moment. And often they allow the patient to control what happens next because they don't know what to do or say in that instant. 
Now they have a barrier to being able to do their job. Now these things combined, that struggle to manage people, the overwhelming need to use social graces, that inability to handle objections, they make it really difficult to get patients to follow that path that I mentioned early on. So they don't all get the care they need to recover or live their very best, healthiest life. All of this can create a lot of upset and a feeling of failure for your front desk. When anyone has too many failed attempts to help others, and look, that's what we're doing here. We're working to help others. When any of us have too many failed attempts to help others, they lose faith in themselves and they give up. And this is very common at the front desk. They stop trying to help those that present a challenge, that present objections, that ask a lot of questions, that aren't really certain. And they only end up helping the easy patients. Those are your low hanging fruit. But that's it. Because they're the only ones they feel like they can help in that moment because they're uncertain how to handle objections or they give too freely with those social graces which means there are a lot of people who don't end up getting the full care that they really need. And your front office staff begins to feel that loss of control and that failure to help. And they tend to focus on the less stressful tasks and they end up not filling your schedule or making sure that their patients arrive, which can create upset and confusion for patients and the rest of your team. Eventually, they may end up giving up altogether, and that's when you see turnover. So if you're seeing a lot of turnover at your front desk, this can be a real reason why. As practice owners and managers, we need our team members to be winning, especially our front office team members. They're the first, last, and main point of contact for every single patient and potential patient that comes through our practice. But without consistent training, they end up having to learn on the job because there isn't a school for them. They haven't gone to school. And then we end up relying on others to give them what they need to be successful. And that's gonna create a lot of problems because it has to happen around patient care. And when someone else trains them, you don't have the consistent scripting and processes that, get, that lead every single new hire and every single retrained employee along the same path. That's what creates confusion and problems for staff and patients. Look, don't leave patient care up to a game of chance. Provide consistent training to your new hires and regular retraining for current staff. This ensures that things don't get forgotten, that everyone provides patients with the same message and manages patients the exact same way. Keep in mind, when they're winning, your patients are winning. And that means that you and your practice are winning.